Welcome to Garden Sanity. I'm Laura, and today I'm sharing how this new raised garden bed came to be. It's a simple DIY that my husband helped me with. I'll start with the pavers we chose first, and then the sprinkler we added, and then I'll talk about the beautiful flowering shrubs I planted and tell you a bit about them. So we continue to add garden beds here in our backyard, and this circular bed is the newest addition. We began this project last fall, with the first decision being what size bed to create. Having this new bed in between the two existing beds we already have, we decided an 8-foot diameter bed would work nicely. The next thing we needed to do was to choose pavers that would match the existing pavers we already have throughout the backyard. So I snapped some photos of our pavers close up to take with us as we shopped. We ended up choosing these paver bricks from Lowe's. We liked their smaller size, matching nicely in size and very close in color to the pavers around our limelight hydrangea tree bed. Here's what the paver product info looked like last fall at least, which may differ today, but at least this gives you some specifics on the pavers we chose. We ordered enough pavers to make two layers of pavers as the edging, plus some extra pavers just to have on hand for whatever reason we might need them. But first, before I get to us creating this bed with the pavers, I'll show you some of what we did to set up a watering system for this new bed. We already have a sprinkler system in place with both existing raised beds having sprinklers, and we knew we wanted to tap into it for this new bed. Now first, I have to tell you, we are not sprinkler professionals or experts by any means, and I just want to be very clear about this. We were sort of winging it, and it was our first time doing this, and we succeeded, <laughs> so we're really happy about that. So we have sprinkler pipes underground that were professionally installed before we owned this home, as well as additional sprinkler lines that were installed by landscapers that we hired years ago. Plus, there's larger drainer pipes also running underground. And this was, as I said, our first time doing this ourselves. So first off, where exactly were the underground pipes? My husband began digging, trying to see what tubing from our sprinkler system was down there. So he found this pipe, which feeds both of the existing raised beds. It's a wider pipe and we didn't want to tap into it. Whether it right or wrong to do so, we just didn't feel right about it. We thought it would be easier to tee off of a sprinkler line in the limelight hydrangea tree bed and just run it over to the new bed underground. So that's what we did. And by we, I mean my husband, not me. <laughs> now remember, this was last fall, and we already knew I wouldn't be planting anything until the spring. So my husband put a spare sprinkler head on the end of the line until we could decide exactly what type of sprinkler head we would want and need. So the main point about figuring out the sprinkler issue is this. It's a lot easier to put a sprinkler where you think it's going to go versus creating your new raised bed and only then deciding that you need to run a sprinkler into it. Because then you're digging underneath the pavers you've put down and you're probably creating some unnecessary frustration and that's not garden sanity. So figure out if you want a sprinkler or a soaker hose first before you begin gluing any pavers together. Okay, speaking of pavers, let me show you how easy it was to create this bed. So we raked away the gravel and we laid the bottom layer of pavers into a circle eight feet in diameter. My husband was much better than I was at measuring to make sure everything was accurate so we had a nice circle. I tend to be a little more impatient. So for the top layer, what we did was we attached each paver to the bottom layer simply using construction glue like you see here. And then we let everything dry. We had some bulk soil delivered and we dug down into the existing soil and mixed in this new soil while adding more as well. By this time it was the end of November and we had already had an early frost. So I ended up using this bed as a holding bed for several plants that I had yet to find a home for as well as some shrubs we had purchased for another area of the yard. I buried them in their pots into the soil and then I covered the pots with even more soil so that they could overwinter outdoors without any worry they would freeze. So this is refreshing to see. Here's what everything looked like with a dusting of snow back in February. It's funny to see this now because today it's currently 90 degrees out with I'd say 400% humidity. So this year, back in April, we removed all of the overwintered plants from the bed. We used an auger to dig some deeper holes and mixed in gypsum down low to help break up the clay soil better. 
and be careful if there's any underground sprinkler or drainage lines because you don't want to damage anything while digging. We also mixed in composted cow manure as well as hollytone because I already knew the plants I'd be putting into this bed liked acidic soil. So over the winter, I figured out exactly what I hoped to put into this bed, and then I changed my mind at least a zillion times. I knew I wanted another flowering tree, and we found a beautiful scarlet fire dogwood at a local nursery. This would be a nice addition to the other flowering trees we already have. Our Magnolia Jane, which blooms in early spring, our Prairie Fire Crabapple tree, which blooms in mid-spring, and our Limelight Hydrangea tree, which blooms from midsummer all the way into the fall season, and then we keep the flowers on for winter interest. So we planted the dogwood tree and anchored it with some wooden supports until the roots get more established. I added a reminiscent pink rose that Proven Winners sent to me last fall to trial in my own gardens. This particular rose will grow to be around four feet tall, but only two feet wide. And it has pretty pink ruffled flowers, it's so beautiful. In front of the rose, I planted three Armeria daydream, also called sea thrift. These are evergreen perennials with flowers in a similar pink shade that bloom throughout the summer. Because they like it drier, they're perfect for the edge of a garden bed. Before adding the rest of the plants, we decided to put the sprinkler in place in the middle of the bed so that it can reach all of the plants equally. We chose a sprinkler head that shoots water out at a low height. And this is perfect to avoid any overhead watering like I deal with in my other beds. In fact, I think we're gonna end up switching out more sprinkler heads over time, now that we know how to do this ourselves. Because I love the idea of watering the beds at the base of plants, which is actually the best way to water. The sprinkler head was put onto a 12 inch riser, which we partially buried into the ground. I'll put the full product info in the description area below for everything we used. So then I planted the rest of the plants. I knew I wanted to plant ground cover azaleas and also dwarf father gillis. And to help with the spacing, I used my chicken wire cloches so I could figure out exactly how many plants to order. I bought three Perfecto Mundo pink carpet azaleas to plant on each side of the reminiscent rows. And what's nice, again, these ground cover azaleas have a similar pink color. They're evergreen and reblooming as well. The largest the ground cover azaleas can get is two feet high by two feet wide, so they'll remain nice and low. I planted one on the right side of the rows, and then I planted two on the left side. I added some biotone into each hole, and I mixed it into the dirt before planting each plant. Next, I planted a Perfecto Mundo double white azalea shrub, also sent to me from proven winners to trial in my own gardens. Now this shrub will eventually grow to be approximately three feet tall and four feet wide, and it's also evergreen and reblooming. On the opposite side from the azalea, I planted two dwarf father gillas called Legend of the Small. So I already have three father gilla Mount Airy shrubs in my front garden beds, which are full size father gillas. And I love how gorgeous they are year round, from the bottle brush spring flowers and the summer blue green leaves to the colorful fall foliage and the bare stems for winter interest. Well, Legend of the Small, these dwarf father gillas I'm planting in this bed, will have the same wonderful features, but in a more compact shape and size. They'll only get to be about two and a half feet high and three feet wide at the most. So this bed may look sparse to you, but use this as a good reminder to pay attention to each plant's mature size and plan accordingly. Because once these plants fill in, this bed will look much more lush and full. Now the final few steps were to put some mulch down. 
We just bought some basic bag mulch to put down first to go underneath the decorative pine bark chips we planned on putting down. And we put this mulch down first so that the dirt was sufficiently covered and won't dry out as fast. Before putting the pine bark chips on, I applied preen to help prevent weeds. Then we put several bags of pine bark chips on the bed, keeping them away from the stems of the plants. And then, when all was said and done, I watered everything well to get the bed off to a great start. The final addition was a solar uplight like we have on our other backyard trees. Again, I'll put a link in the description area below on what we purchased. These lights aren't anything fancy, yet they put out wonderful light at night and have lasted for many years so far. You gotta love that. So this bed is gonna be super easy care. Each of the plants is low maintenance and the reminiscent pink rose will get enough air circulation that I'm really hoping there won't be much fuss involved with keeping her happy. I'm spraying the rose periodically with neem oil, but other than that, this bed should be very pretty and very easy to manage over time. And yes, I will add something else into this bed at some future point. Maybe a fountain or a bird bath or maybe a large rock. But for now, I want these plants to get established and get acquainted with each other. The decorative elements, they can really wait. And you'll see this bed in many upcoming videos as I show you how these plants are developing and what they look like year round. In the meantime, watch this video next to learn complete growing information on the reminiscent pink rose as well as the Perfecto Mundo line of azaleas. And until next time, happy gardening.